Get out of one Viv here. I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back. Uh, in one of the previous videos uh, about the tower terrain, I was talking about my hot wire table and someone mentioned I'd love to see a video about it. It's just a very simple piece of equipment. Um, we'll have a look at its guts. Um, as I mentioned, it's powered by a, a 12 volt uh, battery charger uh, for a car. Um, it's not the safest piece of equipment uh, and <laughs> I'll show you uh, what I'm talking about in that respect. But uh, let's have a look at it. So let's start off with the guts of it. It's basically just a, a whole bunch of pine. Uh, I think these are um, maybe 12 mil by 60 or 70 mil. This could be 19, I don't know. It's just a bunch of pine, wooden frame, one support through the middle. Um, the top board here is just a piece of uh, masonite. Uh, you could use a piece of uh, MDF or some other sort of board uh, for the top of it. And uh, I sort of located somewhere around the middle, the hole. Now I didn't think about the placement of this middle stud here when, uh, when I drilled that hole. So I drilled the hole in the center of the board and then when I built the frame, I put this uh, second stud in the center of the board. And you'll notice that uh, I've marked that off and then subsequently realized that the stud was gonna cover the hole. I've moved the stud over a little bit just so a little bit of that hole is exposed. On the underside of the table, there's a, a washer, a, a nut and bolt coming through one side. I'll talk about that wire in a second. And on the other side here are a bunch of uh, nuts that just hold in place this spring. That spring is attached to the nichrome wire. Nichrome wire is what you need uh, for a hot wire cutter. Um, this uh, uh, cable here is one part of the power and uh, you can see that runs out one side of the, the table and then looped up here with some crappy tape and then uh, the extension, uh, the, the power cable here. There's a second brown cable and that runs off to the top of the hot wire cutter along that beam which we'll have a look at in a minute. And uh, at the end of this power cable are just two uh, bolts which uh, I have uh, secured the, uh, the ends of the wire on there. Like I said, not terribly safe. You want these two things to never touch each other they need to be far apart and uh, uh, this could be done in a much more professional and a much more safe environment. So if you're thinking about building yourself a hot wire cutter, go and check out some of the channels that have builds on them. There's some far better information out there than I can give you, including the rating of wires and the distances electricity has to travel and all that sort of stuff. This is running off 240 volts uh, mains power, so you need to be uh, really... Uh, aware of what you're doing. Uh, I'm relatively confident that uh, uh, my processes will never result in uh, this system shorting itself, but uh, it's still open to uh, the risk. So that's the bottom of the table. Let's have a look at the top of it. So here's the top of the table. As you can see, I've just used an old piece of wood that has been sort of floating around for a while. And um, the spring is down there. It's connected to this nichrome wire. That runs up to another bolt at the top up here. And uh, I've got uh, the, the other wire running through here so that when this circuit is closed there's electricity running through that nichrome wire which heats it up and that's obviously what's doing our cutting. Now I've got the spring down there and it's important to have a spring in your hot wire table um, or your hot wire cutter or whatever device you're using because as this wire heats up, as metal heats up it uh, um, expands, the, the wire will become loose and you'll end up with something that will sort of wriggle around as you're cutting. With that spring in there, as this wire heats up and gets softer, that spring uh, takes some of the tension and the, and the wire remains taut. Now for the L bracket on the side here, again this is really crude. It's just uh, two pieces of timber screwed together. I've put uh, support brackets on both sides. This really is not enough. Um, I've had to pop this piece of uh, timber in here just to uh, help keep everything square and tight. If I remove this, you'll notice that that moves and this now has a whole bunch of wiggle room in it and the wire is, is quite loose now. There's not a lot of tension in that. So I, I need to redo this at some stage just to make it uh, uh, stronger. You can see all the duct tape holding all the wiring everything together. Like I said, this is a crude shoddy job but uh, it serves my purpose as well and I'm happy to use it. You might want to spend a little bit of extra effort to build something that's uh, better. Certainly if you have a look at some of the tutorials from some of the channels out there, you'll find a, a lot of uh, useful information. 
Let's have a look at the power supply for it, and that's pretty much the, the last piece of it. I do have other pieces of equipment that I wanted to add into this, variable volt controls and foot pedals and on-off switches and all that sort of stuff, but um, like, like I said, this works. Perhaps at some stage I might spend a bit of extra effort and sort of make it better. So here's the little battery charger that I'm using. It's just a, a 12 volt uh, car charger. Um, I don't know if the brand is, is sort of important to know, but um, I don't know what the wattage of this, I don't know what the wattage output is. There's no safety sticker or perhaps at one stage there was one on the back and it's peeled off. But um, So I, I could get my um, voltmeter out and, uh, and check it, but uh, really can't be bothered. Um, so this plugs into obviously to my mains. Um, the transformer here drops it from 240 volts down to 12 volts and here are my two terminals, my positive and negative that you'd normally connect up to your battery. Hence the reason I've got the bolts on here so I connect one side to there, the other side to here. Normally when I've got this in operations I wrap these in duct tape and then I keep them separate on the, on the side of the table and then they get pegged in place so um, they can't touch each other. Um, and the, the distance between these two points is significant enough that you're going to get no arcing or anything like that. But uh, this could be done much better with, uh, with a proper plug. And uh, if I really wanted to just use this for my hot wire cutter instead of every now and then charging my batteries, I could change these over into a plug system that would be a, a lot safer to use. But uh, there we go. It's just a very simple table, but it works. Uh, and uh, I just built it to some dimensions. I actually had this piece of timber, hence the reason, or this piece of board. That's uh, the reason why it's this size. No specific reason for that. Other than that's the piece of board that I had hanging around. So I cut some pine to, to fit it and uh, whacked everything else together. It's a very simple uh, little tool. So there we go. There's a very quick look at the hot wire table. I don't know if I need to do a tutorial on it. Uh, I'd rather not. There's uh, other channels out there that uh, have done uh, lots of comprehensive tutorials on lots of different sorts of hot wire cutters. Um, this is the little table that I built. Um, and, I, and I'm happy with it. Like I said, in a, it could be better and perhaps one day I might make it a little bit better with variable volt controls to, uh, to, to have better temperature control of the wire for cutting different sorts of foams and all that sort of stuff, different thicknesses and grades and all that sort of business. But uh, I'm going to get back on with watching some Hornblower and cleaning up my studio. I'll catch you next time, guys. Thanks for tuning in. See ya.